Uh, the presidency has made a special employment stimulus uh, program available to the arts sector and uh, will be distributed via the National Arts Council and the National Film and Video Foundation. The employment stimulus uh, program geared towards employment creation initiatives for artists, creatives, heritage sector workers and cultural uh, workers. Now to tell us uh, more, we're joined uh, via Zoom by Mayor Rosemary Mangope, uh, the National Arts Council's chief executive officer a very good uh, good afternoon to you ma'am thank you uh, very much for joining us on sabc news good afternoon and thank you for having us let's start by talking about the how you know we always hear about these fabulous uh, uh, initiatives but then when it comes to actually filtering down to the people how does uh, the national arts council plan to to distribute this employment uh, stimulus uh, program what plans are are in place at the moment to to do so let me take that question and split it into two. Sure. Because the first option of it is has got to do with how we're communicating this opportunity and initiative. And the second would be how we're calling for proposals. Mm -hmm. So just in fact, in terms of uh, calling for the people that are going to be assisting us to populate and popularize the initiative, we are working with the GCIS, with the Department of Arts and Culture, with the National Film and Video Foundation, as well as the structures that are in the provinces, including provincial spokespeople, so that we can make the initiative known uh, into far-flung areas. The second aspect of it is the how, as you said. So the how is that we are going to be calling for applications, and these applications will be called for through two different streams. The first stream, which we call stream one, would be subsidies. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that we are inviting all those organizations and all those individuals that have actually been interrupted so badly by COVID-19 to apply for a wage subsidy. Now, this is not to pay salaries of all those entities or individuals, but to help them to navigate and overcome the the, 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 the the major issues, particularly the impact yeah. of uh, COVID-19 to job creation. So, so that's stream one. Yeah. When it comes to stream two, again, it's an open call for applications. But here we're calling for very ambitious projects and programs. What that means is that because this is such a short term kind of initiative to inject money into the creative sector, we are looking for programs and projects that are able to be concluded by the 31st of March. Now, Stream 2 is calling for all those kinds of creative, innovative programs that will get our sector back to work again. And what that means is that we would like to see ambition, we would like to see innovation, we would like to actually give the opportunity to the creative sector to demonstrate how they can, going forward and during this period where we still have COVID restrictions, how they can interface with their audiences, given the restrictions. So that's stream one and stream two. Now, the call for applications is open and applicants can actually go onto our website, which is www.nac.org.za in order to apply. Um, how, how do we make sure that this funding actually reaches the right uh, people? There is a perception, and it's not, you know, it's not on your fault, but there, there is a perception because of what we've seen and the, I'm going to call it the, the, the gross corruption that we've seen over the years, that you know, sometimes this sort of funding comes to people who are already linked, already have contacts, already have uh, you know, the friends in government or the friends here and there that, that, that get this, this kind of funding, that the ordinary person uh, struggles. You know, there's red tape, all kinds of things. How do we make sure uh, that the people who do qualify, and maybe that's another question I need to ask you in terms of who is qualifying for, for, for that uh, funding. When you say that uh, people should apply, who should apply, who must uh, uh, apply, and are we sure that indeed the right, the right people will indeed then get uh, uh, this funding? Because certainly this is something that is really needed as this is a sector that, that, that has struggled so very much and been so impacted by, by, by COVID-19. Mm, absolutely true. Now, the only way we can actually make sure that everyone who is deserving can access this 
is through collaborations. Yeah. Now remember that this is for artists, this is for cultural workers, this is for heritage practitioners, and all those other people that are supporting the value chain of the arts. So through collaborating with existing federations, existing organizations, and we're also using influencers mm -hmm. in order to, to disseminate the information. So the idea is everyone is included and everyone can apply. Uh, the only criteria that's needed is that you have to tell us what your project is, how you aim to conclude it within, uh, before the 31st of March, which is our government's financial year end, and whether it'll stimulate uh, uh, the, the community, whether it'll uh, unite us as a people or the communities that you serve, yeah. and uh, whether it'll make the creative sector visible. So there are no restrictions as to who can apply. All right. The issue here is about ensuring that people can access it. So we're still working on zero rating our database so that everyone, regardless of affordability, is able to apply. All right. Thank you very much uh, for giving us your time. And I hope that uh, those that uh, do need it certainly do apply. Thank you, ma'am, for your time. Rosemary Mangope, the National Arts Council's Thank Chief you, Executive Officer, speaking to us about the stimulus uh, package directed to uh, the arts sector.